everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Awesome Sunday Show. Connor here. And I believe my name is Pat. Yeah, I think your name's Pat. I've been confused before. Yeah. I know it's not Rick. Um, I think it's Rick. But uh, Pat, uh, guess what? Chicken butt. That was... That was kind of funny, actually. You set me up. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, we have we have a guest today. Yes, we do. But before we get to that guest, I would like to thank the sponsor of today's episode, the Sparrow's Daggers, guaranteed to make any girl bleed on your sheets or your money back. <laughs> uh, Thanks against I, I, the Sparrow's Daggers. Yeah, I uh, I heard those are pretty useful. Yeah, you know, I, I've heard some testimonies from them. Uh, you know, the sheets. Uh, you really need to clean the sheets after them. Yeah, but uh, you can get those out pretty easily if you. Uh, wash them pretty you know soon after, yeah. after the stain yeah they're not necessarily big the daggers but they're pretty sharp yeah effective mm-hmm. but um so we have a very special guest for our topic that will be mentioned probably right after he introduces himself so uh guest introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself hey how's it going everyone i'm uh, ann coulter uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh my name's ryan wolpank i'm uh, happy to be here i just got uh i just flew back in from texas uh for vacation so i'm an honorary texan right now or at least i'd like to think so and uh, i'm just you don't happy have to, to hide here. your new accent <laughs> yeah. you can use your new accent that you're i'm dressed up as a cowboy right now you guys can't see me but i i got the boots on up to the hat and uh yeah i'm Literally happy from to be head here to toe he's in like the <laughs> most Typical cowboy uniform you could. I am a cowboy. <laughs> uh, so I'm just happy to be here tonight and uh, spew some words with the boys. Thanks, man. Um, so, Pat, you have a very interesting topic that I actually uh, was pretty uh, excited to talk about today because uh, there's one show in particular I really want to mention, but I have other shows in mind too. So, what's the topic you want to talk about today? We're going to talk about TV shows that were canceled too soon. Yeah, that's a, it's a tragedy when that happens. It is. It sucks. And you know what? It seems like it's happening more and more, you know, like some by a great particular shows. network. But yeah, certainly by a particular network, NBC. But uh, other ones too, you know, they're just the shittiest offender of it. But you know, some great shows that don't get a chance to shine get canceled, and it fucking sucks. Um, and it's been happening for a while, but you know, yeah. And then there comes like, especially lately, because you know, once Netflix came up with certain ideas to bring certain shows back. People are just like begging, begging like for Netflix, yeah. Hulu, Amazon, whoever to pick up like the show and restart again. But that's happened uh, very seldomly. Right. So, uh, so I'm sh- we have also some shows in mind, some more than others. Um, like I said before, there's one particular show that's on my heart that I'm so, so, so angry that we'll never see a finale coming to fruition. But, um, as tradition on all, on all, uh, awesome Sunday show, guest goes first. Hey guys, it's a guest. Now, um, that particular series that you were talking about was that the TV adaption of Master of Disguise? <laughs> I just wanted to clarify because I didn't really, you know. All right, so um, I guess uh, am I just uh, going ahead and just saying uh, the yeah, shows? yeah, okay, say the shows, talk about the but, shows, and so um, I did take a look at BuzzFeed to look at uh, you know the uh, the shows that were canceled before their time. Connor's and I, friend, BuzzFeed. And I'm not, <laughs> 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 I'm not too proud to admit that I haven't seen much on there. Although I'm very familiar with a lot of shows, you know, I'm familiar with Deadwood, I'm familiar with Freaks and Geeks and Firefly and all that. Uh, I have a deep appreciation for movie and TV, but I just haven't seen a lot of them yet. And I think since I'm dressed like a cowboy, I'm going to have to start with Deadwood tonight. Uh, but the two that are on my mind tonight, uh, I'll go ahead and start with the first one. Chappelle Show. I'll throw that in as a curveball. Yeah. Because yeah. technically it was canceled before its time. Well, actually, um, he left. True. So he, it, I don't blame it on Comedy Central. I blame it on him. I don't blame him at all. Like it's, I get well, it. I mean, like yeah. that's. I mean, the the show ending. I blame on him, even yeah. though I understand well, why yeah. he left. Well, it. But either either way, it ended. And uh, you know, I was a huge fan. It was a great Definitely show. Definitely did end too soon. It's you know, you can never go a night without hearing a good Honestly, reference from Chappelle after show. after SNL. I mean, SNL gets this nod because of longevity and some of the cast that has been on it. But I think I would say Chappelle show is the number two sketch show of all time. Yeah, I, you know, I just, you know, I respect Dave Chappelle. I think he's one of the best, and uh, I don't blame him for not wanting to be a sellout. I get his reasoning, uh, but uh, I was just sad to see it go. Yeah, he also had a problem with the contract, too. It was a $50 million contract, so there must have been stuff in there that, like, he read that really made him feel uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. Therefore, he that, didn't, you know. I think he yeah. said he felt like his they were, like, sucking his soul out or something like that. Which yeah. I get, so I don't blame him, but either way, 
you know, I was just happy. I was uh, pretty upset to see the show go. Yeah, but that's still technically a show that ended too Before early. Before its time. Yeah, yeah, so even if it wasn't canceled, it was... Yeah. You can really say the same about, like, granted, Key and Peele had a much more uh, vibrant and... Uh, Lasted longer. Yeah, it had a great run, but they ended it when they wanted to end it. It wasn't like it was canceled or anything like that. I mm-hmm. consider that a show that ended too soon. It's, it, I wouldn't put I, it on my list. But. I think it ended too soon. I wish they kept going because, like, Key and Peele is definitely up there, probably top five sketch shows of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. I thought, you know, sometimes they had a lot of misses, but, man, when they had a great sketch, it was phenomenal. But that's sketch shows in general. Like, yeah. dude, some of the worst sketches I've ever seen were on SNL, and SNL is one of the greatest <laughs> television shows of all time. time. Yeah. Yeah, SNL uh, certainly has several weeks of rough patches before you get a, a good one. Sometimes, sometimes there's uh, that's particularly on the season though. But then they had those seasons that really hit. Yeah, like hit hard, like almost every episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I totally, I to- I'm totally there with you with Chappelle's show. I like that would have made my list if I remembered to, if I remember about that show. <laughs> but, never uh, forget. Yeah, never forget. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, I want to watch that show again now. Yeah, it's, yeah, I mean, you, 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 it just never gets old. It really doesn't. Yeah. Uh, Dave Chappelle, he's one of my favorite comedians. He, he's one of the best. He's one of the greats. And some of the episodes that were supposed to be season three, like the lost episodes, yeah. some of those were pretty funny. Well, like, yeah. Were they like the black universal monsters? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> and, was Charlie, great and they're sketch. like, dude, you got pubes on your head. And Charlie Murphy's just like patting his head. <laughs> Yo, you fucked up my gauze, son. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that was great. Um, I, I guess I'll move forward to the next one. You guys ready for this one? Yeah, Angry Beavers. Oh, Ooh, good one. Angry yeah. Beavers. That's that was my second one. I had two tonight, and uh, that's the second one. It's just you know what? I was uh, reading a little more into it just because you know it's been a while since I even. You know, I mean, when's the last time you guys even watched it? Actually, a couple weeks ago. Okay, well, <laughs> it's been years. Well, I was up. I was that's up enough, like, though. Yeah, uh, like three thirty or four a.m. And it was on, because now, I forget, it's not the main Nickelodeon channel. It's like Nick 2 or whatever. They have like a five-hour block starting at midnight that they play like all 90s cartoons and stuff on it. That's awesome. And I mean, I know Connor's a fan. You know, they do the ode to the classic monster movies and all that. You know, they're yeah. constantly breaking, you know, the wall. The with fourth the audience. Wall. Yeah, the fourth wall, nonetheless. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's just... Great show. I was Excellent reading into show. it. It's about it was only sixty four episodes, and they never got to the finale. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Therefore, it ended before its time. It did. Yeah. It's a uh, if you don't mind the pun, a damn shame. <laughs> it is. I don't a damn mind shame. The, pun, the pun at all. Yeah. So, uh, do you have anything else you want to say about those two particular shows? Or? Uh, no, I don't actually, Connor. But thanks for asking. No, I don't. Uh, I th- that's the two I came prepared with. Um, that's what I got, and I'm actually I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. Not really, but um, I do. I guess <laughs> I do miss those shows and wish <laughs> they had more time. R.I.P. All right. Um, so, Ryan, thank you for sharing the shows. Uh, Patrick. Okay. I know I, you got a slew of I shows. Have a, yeah, I have a slew. Um, a I have board. a total of twelve, but I'm gonna let Connor talk about two that I know he has on here. First, I'm going to say that I think a lot of people have enjoyed, especially people our age, Freaks and Geeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Canceled way too soon. Only had uh, 18 episodes or 17 episodes. The 18th one I don't think ever aired or whatever, but it ended on a big cliffhanger. Um, NBC canceled it. Though. Like, yeah. Oh, it's still working. And then they fucking canceled it. And it was one of the best shows, like, you know, especially for, like, there's a, a lot of big name actors came out of that. A lot mm-hmm. of big name actors were on it. Yeah, you know, most of Judd Apatow's like frequent players and James Franco and Jason Segel, Seth Rogen, obviously. And uh, like, it sucks that it was so good. Yeah, you know, even though it took place in the '90s, like watching it when we were the age of all those different characters, like when you rewatch it, still like completely 100 percent relatable. Well, a lot of shows, but what, what a lot of shows get wrong is kids, mm-hmm. um, and like a lot of shows tend to. You know, whether, you know, depending on the writer, will write a kid as almost like too selfish or too stupid in certain areas. And like, you know, kids aren't dumb. And that's yeah. what I really like about that's what I really like about Freaks and Geeks. It's that kids are more inexperienced than they are stupid. Right. And I think one of the reasons that they were able to get kids down so well is because Seth Rogen, I think one or two other people were really young writing it at the time. Or yeah. With some of the writers on there. You know, I think when he did it, he was still in high school. 
or it was like supposed to still be in high school. I don't know if he dropped out or not. Yeah, Seth Rogen, uh, I believe he dropped out of high school in Canada and the United States. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and look at him now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think that was that's such a classic show that's completely I just, rewatchable. I just want to throw in there Undeclared, too. That was my next one. Okay. Undeclared is like the pseudo-sequel to Freaks and Geeks. Also, only one season. Also, Judd Apatow. A lot of the same ca- uh, actors from Freaks and Geeks. Uh, Seth Rogen had a much bigger role. At this, play, at this time, it took place freshman year of college. And another, it was really, really funny. I think this one had more humor to it. Like, Freaks and Geeks was really funny, but there's a lot of really good emotional drama to it. And Underclad uh, focused more on the humor and absurdity. But in fact, Charlie Hunnam was on that show. He's one yeah. of the stars on that. He was, uh, uh, he was a foreign, ex- he was foreign student. Yeah, what's his name? He was Jackson, Sons of Anarchy or some shit. Right? Yes, yeah. I'm getting a nod from Anthony. That was <laughs> nice. Right. Um, yeah, I, I didn't watch the show, so I... Yeah, it's another one I need to. Get. I actually yeah. enjoyed Undeclared a little more than Freaks and Geeks because it was a little more humorous, mm-hmm. uh, and I think when Judd Apatow hits hits his humor, not all, not everything he does, I feel like is gold. Um, this is forty. Yeah, this is forty. Uh, I also didn't think uh, Funny People was very funny either, uh, but it was because really, it really wasn't a comedy. It really wasn't. But then, like they advertise it as, I don't know. Yeah. I have a problem with that movie, but uh, but when he does hit the mark. I think it. He really does like, mm-hmm. and it. Undeclared was great. I think, yeah, he's ha- written and directed some of the best comedies of all time, or at least of the since two thousand. Yeah, you know, the last uh, decade and a half. He directed um, what you call it, uh, the Amy Schumer movie, uh, Trainwreck. Trainwreck. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah, you look at like forty year old version, knocked up. Two movies right there that yeah. are you know excellent. Mm-hmm. Some of the best comedies of the last you know twenty thirty years. That also launched a lot of people's careers too. Yeah, great. So, so, so one unfortunate career though. <laughs> Catherine Heigl. Oh man. Uh, yeah, that didn't last too long. No. She burned. She burned a bridge. Well, every bridge imaginable. Um, all right. So moving on. The one that was canceled actually quite recently, uh, within the last year, unfortunately, Agent Carter, starring Haley Atwell. It was um, a spinoff of the Captain America movies. Uh, took place back in the 40s. Agent Carter, Haley Atwell, was in all three Captain America movies, actually. You know, as Captain America's uh, best girl. But the show took place before, like, the found, it was uh, about the SSR, which was, like, the organization that was later made to be S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, which, if you watch Winter Soldier, you know, it was taken down, taken down from the inside. But on TV, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. still happened. So it was, like, a prelude to that. Took place in the 40s. This Hila was a terrific actor, actress. Uh, there was a lot of great names on it. Um, Dominic Cooper, who played Tony uh, Howard Stark, is now actually the lead character in Preacher, um, which is funny. But like the set design, the costumes, the whole time period, I think they captured wonderfully. Uh, not to mention there was a lot of kick-ass things in it, and uh, they really played around well with some characters and some really good storylines. It was canceled way too soon because it didn't have the highest ratings. But it had great critical acclaim, though. Yeah, it was, yeah, <laughs> critically acclaimed for sure, sure. And it was like it was good because it was a served as a mid-season replacement to Agents of Shield. So like, what happens is with Agents of Shield, all three of the seasons they had so far, right before Christmas, they go on a few month like production break, um, and it's usually because. Because uh, Agent Carter, they throw in between that. Agent Carter was, was like eight episodes, so eight weeks. Uh, or I think the second season was like ten, but served in a replacement for that. And then S.H.I.E.L.D. would usually pick up back in March. That way they would have time for two, one or two Marvel movies for them to draw in a connection for that they had to wait for. You know, just to give the actors a break because they film like ten months out of the year or something. So, but yeah, it was a great mid-season replacement. It just stood really, really well on its own. Uh, it was a bummer that it was canceled. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Aaron Carter, but I do have to check out Agent Carter. <laughs> <laughs> it's only one way to be checked. You know? I do recommend Agent Carter, especially if you like Haley Atwell and the Captain America movies. It's great, great yeah. show. Great show. Uh, another one. It did technically get a comeback season. I know exactly what you're talking about. Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. The show was canceled after three seasons by Fox, and the third season was even shortened. 
And it took quite a while for them to get a season four on Netflix, uh, which a lot of people on their initial viewing weren't crazy about. Like when I first watched the first the the fourth season again, wasn't crazy about it. But be- that's because the format was really weird. But upon like going back and like having seen it once, I was able to appreciate it much more. But critically acclaimed show, one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. Excellent cast. And then Fox canceled it because they didn't know how to market it. Yeah, like David Cross. Ever since Fox canceled it from season three, or even before that, he was criticizing the shit out of him about like how terribly they handled the show. But a wonderful show, and apparently we're gonna get a fifth season. Here's hoping, but the cast is really busy because they're all big names now. Yeah. Uh, Clone High. Did you guys ever seen this? Nope. Oh, uh, it was this been. great animated show back when we were in. I think it was on when we were in like fifth grade, maybe sixth grade. It was created by the guy who created Scrubs and Cougar Town. I think his name's Bill Lawrence. Um, and it was about the scientists cloned some of the biggest historical figures in history, like JFK, Abe R. Lincoln, R. Cleopatra, R. Gandhi, R. R. Uh, and all, a whole other like important and ridiculous people from history and put them in high school as part of this like government program to build future leaders and all that stuff absolutely ridiculously funny because the only one who was probably the most similar to how they were was JFK oh, uh, but the other ones were like complete like parodies themselves like Gandhi was a crazy like party monster asshole so funny <laughs> it, it was only like 10 episodes or maybe 12 and then was canceled by MTV um, MTV had a good show <laughs> yeah, I mean MTV did have Beavis yeah, Celebrity too. Death Match. Come on. Celebrity True. Death Match. Come on. True. Another show canceled right, too guys. early. Yeah. That was not on my list, but that was canceled too early. It was. I didn't know that. Well, there's another one we can add to the list tonight because yeah. wow. That, that was the ultimate late night. I got nothing else to watch. Yeah, yeah. it was funny. Oh, it was mm-hmm. absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Excellent. Great matchups. That was kind of a yeah. like adult swim before it was adult swim. Right. Pretty much. Right. Yeah. That was like the pre robot chicken. Yeah. Like they had a lot of similarities with that. It was like oh, adult celebrity swim. Celebrity Deathmatch was uh, wonderful. Yeah. All right, moving on, Party Down, uh, which was on it was either Stars or Showtime. I don't remember it, but it was a show created by Paul Rudd, and it was about this group of failed actors and writers or you know, trying to get their career started who worked for a catering company, which is extremely common about actors trying to get their start or salvage their career. You know, They either become caterers or waitresses and waiters. Like You hear that all the time. The cast was... Phenomenal. Every episode was directed by Fred Savage of One Year's Fame, which is cool. Um, but it was Adam Scott, Jane Lynch, Lizzie Kaplan, um, Martin Starr, Ken Marino were the like the main cast, and then Megan Mullally got added, and then just every like every cameo you can imagine, like J.K. Simmons was on it. A lot of people from the state and like Reno Nine One One were on it. Even Steve Gutenberg was in it. There was a whole episode centered around Steve Gutenberg. Steve Gutenberg? And it was Gutenberg? wonderful. I actually saw that episode. It yeah, was it was wonderful. excellent. Yeah. yeah and Dude, like, he's like my favorite like actor that I know that most people don't know. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. And he's in, the same person yeah. in every movie. Yeah. But he's but awesome. He's enjoyable. Yeah. And and in that episode, that's what he was. Uh, and it was great. Um, it was canceled because it had low ratings. And then because it was up, up in the air of whether it was going to get canceled or not, Adam Scott then auditioned for Parks and Rec and got uh, obviously got the role and uh, they were like well he was the main character forget it we're done yeah fortunately there was talks of a movie but there's always talks of a movie of a show happening and it's yeah, not gonna happen that almost that yeah and also too like a lot of times when they make a movie based on a TV show it doesn't pan out very well yeah like you and it's not like it's not one of those things that would have worked well as a movie yeah because it was very episodic and there was you know it it was just like the the episode was centered around this one birthday party, uh, office party, you know, whatever, and that's why it works so well. It can't like I don't think it would maintain a ninety minute or longer thing. No, it just yeah. wouldn't work. Like to this day, I don't think there would have been a successful Sopranos movie if they ever went forth with it. I think that would have a better shot. I don't think so. That <sighs> I'm not saying it would have worked out why, but yeah. I mean a better shot at being. Uh, good than like and fit than Party Down would have or yeah. lots of other shows would. But you know what was a good movie? The Powerpuff Girls movie. 
That worked. I don't remember it. I don't remember that either. Dude, what? The Powerpuff Girls movie? I mean, I, I, mean, I assume I've seen it, but oh. I, I can't remember. Yeah, I know. Yo, I've it's it, great. But... It's great. It's a great movie. Huh. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, I don't remember saying it. It's also easier to adapt a cartoon to a movie than a, yeah, than, much a, easier. Than, a than a serious show like The Sopranos. Plus, uh, yeah. Connor was also masturbating to that last night, so that's why he's uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was telling me before how much he is into hentai. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but what did you say? Buttercup was your favorite? <laughs> Yeah, well, what's the butchy one? (laughs) (laughs) That's what what gets you going, huh? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Uh, Moving on. Yeah, just move on. This one, another one canceled by NBC, Constantine. Now, I know you didn't watch it, but it was a TV show adaptation of the uh, very popular cult character, Constantine, of uh, formerly Vertigo, now DC Comics. Um. And the Justice League Dark movies that they're making, both the animated one and the, the live action. But great show. Really weird. Uh, very into magic. Very dark. It was on NBC. NBC kind of fucked it over because they had it in like during the midweek at like 8 o'clock, which is like a pretty good time slot. But then they put it up against American Idol and America's Got Talent and The Voice all while they were like in their primes. So obviously – the show that like not a lot of people know the character of is not going to get a lot of time. Then they moved them to like Friday at like nine thirty, and awful choice, awful choice. They awful, wanted the show awful to fail. Choice. And you know what? Like the show did uh, after the very first episode, they fired a couple of writers. I don't know if they fired the showrunner, but they fired this other actress. So they had to completely rewrite the next twelve episodes because of the changes to it. And it was rocky at parts. And, but it started picking up at the end. Uh, never really reached its potential. But one thing that everybody agrees on, the actor who played Constantine, Matt Ryan, was the most perfect choicing for Constantine yeah. and one of the best casting choices for any comic book character ever. This guy embodied Constantine better than anybody else I've ever seen. Better than Keanu Reeves. Well, yeah. considering the- think, about it, think about it like this. Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark. Yeah. Like, that's how Matt Ryan is. Matt Ryan is Constantine. Like, it was like they were just what that's what the creators had in mind. They're like, one day there's going to be this guy and he's going to be like this and this guy's going to be able to do it. And wrote it as a character. Um, he did make a one off appearance on Arrow. He actually is going to voice Constantine in the Justice League Dark animated movie. People are pushing for him to get into the live action movie. Probably won't happen because they're going on a bigger star. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a real bummer. The only NBC gave it 13 episodes and just pulled the plug. Some fucking assholes. Ended on a major cliffhanger involving the devil, some demons, and God. Like, come on. Yeah. I, I, fuck you. Um, and there's a lot of great Easter eggs. One in particular, I think it was the very first episode, Dr. Fate. There was a big Dr. Fate reference. There was a, His helmet was right in his like <sighs> magical room. Dude, Dr. Fate is one, probably one of the coolest DC comic book characters yes. ever. Yeah. All right, let's see. Move on. Better off Ted. I feel like you guys haven't watched a bunch of these, but Better Off Ted was uh, lasted two seasons. I forget the main actor's name, but it starred Portia Del Rossi, Del Rossi or whatever, you know, Ellen DeGeneres' wife, um, and a couple other random characters. But it was so, like, quick-witted, very sharp cuts. It was, like, kind of similar to an Edgar Wright movie in tone and style without all the pop culture references and, like, homages. Uh, but really sharp writing, really smart. Uh, lasted two seasons, was canceled, unfortunately. Great show. I think it's still on Netflix. If it is, check it out. Definitely recommend it. Uh, let's see. I'm only going to say one, well, two more, and then I'll let you go. But I'll go over <coughs> this quick. Legit by Jim Jeffries. I actually talked about this when we were talking about the TV ratings. Yes. Uh, yeah, Jim Jeffries, Australian stand up comedian, hilarious, had a show on FX and then for the first season, and then I went to FXX, but FX canceled it because of the ratings hilarious show perfectly like captured like this guy's sense of humor um and dj qualls was like (laughs) played this uh uh, paraplegic guy with like cerebral palsy or uh some other i think i don't think it was cerebral palsy it was some other thing but like it was really funny because you would look at dj qualls and be like that guy definitely does really have this because if you ever seen DJ Qualls, he's this frail, like weird looking dude that looks like he would have some sort of disease. <laughs> uh, and the last one I'm going to mention, Todd and the Book of Pure Evil. It was a Canadian show that was 
canceled about two or three years ago. You saw Deathgasm. I love Deathgasm. You love Deathgasm. Great, I know. great Cass movie. Love Deathgasm. Ryan, you should watch Deathgasm. Do, Anthony, have you, you seen Deathgasm? Deathgasm? I feel like if it's, it's if I did, you made me watch it. It's <laughs> fucking hysterical. Deathgasm was this like it's this New Zealand uh, horror comedy. It's a comedy. Yeah, it's it's a well, comedy. It's technically horror because you know the monsters and demons, whatever. Yeah, there's nothing really scary in it though. It there, no, it, it's yeah. more it's more it's like Shaun of Dead. It's more comedy than horror. Yeah. But it's great. Oh, it so is this, amazing. This show had elements of that. It had some elements of Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Ooh, me like uh, It was like there was this book of pure evil, much like the book of the Deadites or the Dead in uh, Evil Dead series. And you read this one passage, and it gives that person whatever they want. But there's always a huge cost. Like in the very first episode, the main character, Todd, wanted to be the greatest metal guitarist ever. And... He did, except anybody who listened to him playing guitar, their anuses and colon <laughs> collapsed, and they just bled out their asshole and died. Came with the like, price. that was the first episode of the show. <laughs> so, like, everything else, like, came like that Sounds throughout like the Friday rest night. of it. And it was like, uh, yeah. This show's was, right up my alley. It was like 26 <laughs> episodes, but each episode was something like that, something ridiculous. And then there was, like, this, this satanic cult that operated out of an old folks' home. And stuff, and like, oh, it was ridiculous. Uh, and the music was very reminiscent of both Deathgasm and Metal Ocalypse a lot. Okay. Really, really good uh, metal music. And Jason Muse was actually one of the side characters in every episode, and he was really, really funny. <laughs> uh, that's going to wrap up my list. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave Connor to two yeah. of the ones I know he's going to say. Uh, well, uh, first, I'm going to mention the ones that I don't think you do know I'm going to say. Uh, one for me is Andy Richter controls the universe. Ooh, I, I, I do that show was young when I came out, uh, when it came out, uh, that it, it came out around 2000, 2001, 2002 ish. So I was like around 10 years old and I actually, and it was on, um, it was on Fox and I remember actually it was like the first like sitcom kind of show like that, that I really like got into and it was only two seasons and the ratings were never very good. Uh, it was essentially like Andy Richter plays himself, uh, but he's more, he's a struggling writer. Like he more of an aspiring writer and he's not very successful. So he works for, um, a company that he like, and he like edits and like, you know, writes little things for the company and, you know, he just gets in like misadventures and like hijinks and stuff like that. And it's pretty funny. And, uh, he has a boss that he's like friends with, but that he was like romantically involved with too. Uh, but like it never really worked out. But like, so they kind of always hint that like they might get back together or not. And he has best friend who's like very good looking. And mm -hmm. like all he does is everything's handed to him because he is very good looking. So then you have Andy Richter kind of like writing jokes about himself. Like, yeah. you know, it was pretty good. And I it has one of the funniest, funniest moments I've almost, I've, I've, I've ever seen in any television show is there's they kind of do like little cutaways like family guy did but not as excessive and uh <laughs> there's a scene where the the, the ex-girlfriend slash friend slash boss uh goes up to andy and he, she's just like like you know you always like think things that are wrong blah, blah, blah. he's like no i don't and he goes remember when you thought that the janitor was hitler and then like they cut to the janitor and it's this dude that's like super old with a Hitler mustache, and Andy Richter just looks at him, points at him, and he goes, Hitler! <laughs> and just screams at him and runs right at him. And it was so great. And then she goes, Andy, do you realize if Hitler was still alive, he'd be 107 years old? Like, he goes, so? Like, just totally ignores the fact that, like, he's completely <laughs> wrong. And that's really, like, the element of the show. Really, 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 really good. Um, I have another show that I just totally, like, forgot about, actually. Uh, right, let's cut to the music. <laughs> um, actually, eh, screw it. If I remember it, I'll bring it up. So I'll get to the shows that like really broke my heart that they ended way too soon. Um, first one I'm gonna mention it kind of it kind of did end, but not really. Uh, is Batman Beyond? Hmm. I fu okay. fucking love that show. Excellent show. So yeah. so good. And that show got a lot of hate before the internet was like really like the internet. Um. Essentially, like, do you know the essence of Batman Beyond? Yeah, I used to watch it after school. Yeah, it's, it's great. So for those listeners who don't know, um, 
it's Batman in the future, but Bruce Wayne is really elderly and can't fight crime anymore. And in the very first episode, um, it's not spoilers because it's the first episode. Um, Bruce Wayne is about, you know, hitting like 60 and he's, you know, fighting a um, whatever, like a drug trade or robbery or whatever. And he's like losing almost. And he finally like gets to the point where he picks up a gun and wants to shoot. Mm -hmm. And he puts down the gun. He says no more. And then it cuts away to Terry McGinnis, who is a teenage kid who gets in a lot of trouble, um, gets into a lot of fights, and but he's naturally a, just a really tough dude, and someone you don't really want to mess with in the parking lot. Uh, but he really, but he also has a very big heart at the same time. Like he knows justice. Like he want he deep down he's he's a good person. Mm. So he one day he just he's fighting off the Joker gang and he, he, because he's trying to help Bruce Wayne, who he thinks is just this elderly guy and they end up like kicking ass together. So through a series of events, Terry becomes Batman and he has to keep it from his girlfriend. He, you know, goes, imagine kind of Spider-Man in the like high school era, but just a lot more badass and like not as much comic relief <clears throat> and like whatever. And com- a mentor. Yeah. And a mentor who's Batman or was Batman. And um, and with the comic relief that is in the show is not really at the expense of Terry. It's more of at the situation to, yeah. that he comes across. So I mean, he is he is a wise ass too. So he is he a wise ass. Some stuff. Uh, another big aspect of it obviously takes place in the future, but like it's in one of those futures that like people predicted, like in the fifties, like flying cars, and right? All this crazy technology. He actually has one of my favorite bat suits. Uh, it is my favorite. I mean, it's bat very suit. sleek, but the technology in it is. Great. Now well, let's, let's cut to the chase. It's sexy, guys. It is. It's sexy. I want to clarify. It's my favorite uh, not classic Batman bat suit. So, like, any other bat suit that's not, like, usually the classic Batman, like, that's my Connor's favorite. favorite one is the one that George Clooney wore. Yeah, the, the bat, bat nipples. nipples. Dude, it was sexy. Yeah. So sexy. I mean, it's Come no on. turtle suit from Master of Disguise, but yeah. it'll, it'll get the job done. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but, so, the reason why I say, like, it, it counts because it was canceled, uh, so there wasn't really a fourth season. Uh, Bruce Tim and like the other creators and Paul Dini, like the people that were behind that show, they were also behind Batman the Animated Series and Superman the Animated, and series. Superman, the animated series, which is a great series. Um, not as good as Batman, but still amazing. Uh, they always planned the fourth season to be like the finale season, and they said they were going to get into Terry McGinnis's origins, and people were and people were somewhat confused because. They're like, well, his origin was explained in the first episode, how he became Batman. But so, like, there was something else that lied within. Yeah. So, and the, the reason that like the production stopped on the fourth season was because of they did the first Justice League. Show. Yeah, they wanted to focus on that, which ended up being very successful. Yeah, and then had another one right after it. Yeah, um, a sequel series after it, and uh, which but, was also very successful. Yes, but they did have Batman Beyond. Did eventually. Uh, was it through the movie or is it through one of the Justice League shows? That it was the, the season one finale thing. of Justice League Unlimited. So it was technically like a lot of people, even though it's technically a sequel series, a lot of people just kind of wrap it up as four seasons. That like So like Justice League is season one and two and Justice League Unlimited is season three and four. And uh, season uh, the season finale of the season three of Justice League, which is technically season one of Justice League Unlimited, uh, ends Batman Beyond like just like ends the series and um i don't want to spoil it for people who very, haven't seen very it. good reveal very very amazing reveal with great characters and it's it, it's kind of bittersweet because the episode is so good it is such a good episode and it wraps up everything so neatly yeah. but it also sucks too because it's like i could have gotten a fourth season yeah, I would have loved the fourth season. You know, at least we got the animated movie Return of the Joker. That, and that, that was great. That was really good. Yeah, yeah. That, that was awesome. Uh, and they did use him in Justice League Unlimited more than once. They like, did. There was this whole episode where they they get the Justice League gets sent to the future, and uh, there's somebody manipulating the timeline, so, like, it's just all completely fucked. But, yeah. like, it's funny to see, like, see Bruce Wayne of, like, you know, in his 30s or 40s, whatever he is, main like the main era bruce wayne and justice league interact with his like 20 30 year old self or however much older he is in it just yeah. both the exact same personality still. but i like the future justice league like the Hawkman that's in there is actually like cool um solid. uh old static shock old static shock and also well, you know why that Hawkman was so cool 
because he was the son of John Stewart. Exactly. Yeah, and John Stewart <laughs> is the best Green Lantern. Uh, but also, I like the Green Lantern that's in that uh, yeah. Justice League too. He's like a young, like uh, a really young Buddhist monk kid, and it's really that is cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. And he's like very peaceful, but like it's really what really makes it interesting is it's almost an antithesis, but it also shows that like will can be. Even though like, you may not see it from a certain person, like it can be, a, it can be stronger than you think. Because essentially, like how powerful the Green Lanterns, uh, the Green Light is the light, of, like is the color of will. So the stronger Green Lantern's will, the stronger the Green Lantern. So that's why Hal Jordan is considered to be the strongest Green Lantern because he he's considered to have one of the strongest wills in the universe. Um, that's why like the Green Lantern uh, ring chose him when Abin Sir passed away. And that's how he was able to uh, conquer Sinestro, who was considered the strongest Green Lantern at one time. But now Sinestro is the most powerful uh, Yellow Lantern, or uh, Sinestro in the Sinestro Court, because he is he sees himself as uh, like the embodiment of fear. Except because right now in DC Rebirth, essentially parallel parallax pretty okay. much provided. We're... Okay, sorry, <laughs> I totally just rambled on there. Um, <laughs> So it's really cool to see this like little kid like you know use like the green power, uh, kinda, the Green Lantern power. Like uh, little kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so even though it technically finished, it never got a fourth season. So yeah, it, it's really disappointing. Yeah. Um, all right. So this one I am majorly upset about. It is. This hurt me. This was on my list, but I wanted Connor to, because I know how passionate he is. Yeah, it. It, this hurt me bad. Like, when I saw the this season two, all right, so I didn't watch the show uh, when it, like, aired on Cartoon Network. I watched it. I straight up watched it right through through Netflix. See, that's why it got canceled, because you didn't watch it when it was on the air. No, it's it's because you were part of the problem. Yeah, it, you know, it was Cartoon Network mishandling it. It's Young Justice. Holy shit! This series great, is great show. It's awesome. It's one of the best animated shows I've ever seen in my life. It's so fucking good. All the characters are done right. They're all written well. There's nobody that's annoying. There wasn't a single episode that sucked. Um, the villains were great. And it, what I really like too is a lot of people like the Teen Titans TV show that was on Cartoon Network, not Teen Titans Go, like the one before that. I was the one before that was pretty good. It was, yeah, that was, was pretty good. It was all right. I, I, it was whatever. Um, like some episodes were you definitely good. You just really love T Titans Go. No, <laughs> I've never seen an episode of that series. Fucking terrible. Is it really? It's terrible. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, but like Young Justice is like what I want, always wanted. You know, even though it's technically not Teen Titans, it involves characters that were part of the Teen Titans in the comic books. Yeah, and it's the sidekicks of the major heroes. Yeah, but the thing is though, like they really focus on how they develop like so well, and also the Justice League is in it a lot. Mm-hmm. And like, there's really, really like great themes of you know, of like acceptance and uh, you know, parenting too. Uh, it shows a side of Superman sacrifice. That, sacrifice. Oh, it makes Superman look like a piece of shit. It does. And like, but like, you also kind of feel for Superman too because you don't really know how you react. Essentially, like, two of my favorite things and actually one of my favorite episodes in a TV show ever is in this ep- is in Young Justice. So. There's a character, Miss Martian, who is uh, who's named McGann, and she is the niece of Martian Manhunter, uh, John Jones, and she is a green. She's a green Martian, but technically she's a white Martian. But the Martians are masters of shape- shapeshifting, so she makes herself look like a green Martian. But like the way it's very Star Trekky. She's like she's like really good looking as far like that like that's how they draw her as. And but Connor loves Sentai. He also loves children. Can you stop saying that? I don't want people actually thinking like... He like, jerks off to Miss Martian. You, ha- you're you addicted to, fe- to foot fetish. No. Yeah, you are. No, I hate feet. <laughs> you Rex Ryan over here? <laughs> Quentin Tarantino over here. Oh, that's yeah. a good one too. Yeah, keep him over related. Yeah. yeah. Pat likes feet fetish, new rumor. No, um, no, no, no. So, uh, so she actually has a problem with self-image. And so Who she doesn't, just, right? Yeah, and she, like that's the thing. But Not like, that it's also down like, at the other end of the table. <laughs> and even though it's technically a show geared towards teens, it's very like uh, you you can really it's like anybody can really watch it and, and like relate to it. And she develops a relationship with Connor Kent, who is the son in quotes of Superman, but technically he's a clone between of Lex Luthor and Superman put together. Um, in the show, they kind of explain that very well. And so she has a really she has a really tr- um, tough time with her own self image, but also um, Superboy Connor Kent uh, can never get old. 
So he has like a problem with that as well. So she's like ashamed, and like there's and there's episodes where like you know, like where villains use that leverage against her, and it's like, it's done so well, and like I really like that series a lot. It was really fucking good. I'm pretty sure it's still on Netflix, but it ended. It ended on such a huge cliffhanger. Yeah, it ha- it ended on one of the the worst cliffhangers. And what I mean by worst, I mean it was so good, and the fact that they never ever are going to resolve it. So, do you know who Darkseid is, Ryan? I do, kind of. Uh, I know they really fumbled it in the movie. I know that. Well, I don't know what the yet. hell was going on. I had to look it up. Yeah, and um, he's like the ultimate bad guy, right? Yeah, he's yeah, like DC Thanos. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah yeah, 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 like the same level. Yeah, except they didn't ruin Thanos yet. Not yet. Yeah, they probably won't. But uh, <laughs> so Rowling essentially, like the way season two ends, spoilers. Fast forward like a minute and or two minutes if you don't want to hear this. Um, season two of Young Justice ends uh, with Darkseid and him coming to conquer the Earth. Interesting. So. Like you see that, and when I saw that, I was like, "Holy shit!" I'll never know what happens ever, and yeah, like, it sucks. It really, like, it really bothered me. I was really into that show, man. Like, it was so good. Like every episode hit. Yeah. Cartoon Network canceled it because it the toys weren't selling the yeah. way they wanted them to, but and they also didn't market the toys. A hot well. load of horse shit. Yeah, that, and it, it, it it sucks too because that's how a lot of TV shows are judged, or, or cartoons in general, is how much merchandise they sell, because. <laughs> Like cartoons don't get as high ratings as like other like you know mainstream TV shows, so they have to rely on other things to get money. And like Young Justice, like I think the reason why I didn't sell a lot of merchandise was because it was kind of geared towards an audience that wouldn't really buy action figures. You know, like to, like I stopped buying action figures at like thirteen years old. You know, and that show is geared towards people who like can be at any age. I had all the street sharks. I did. Ha- I don't yeah. think I had all of them, but I had quite a couple. I had all of them. I even had the bad guys. I was at. That did you play with their feet too? <laughs> I'm not at the feet, so no. Sure. So yeah, that was that. That those were my shows. You couldn't think of the other one you had. Nah, but it, it, it might not have been that important. Uh, That's the vibe you're giving me. Well, we know your favorite show is still on the air. Uh, I think it's going to be in its 11th season. Oh, no, it's your favorite show. No, Connor loves the Big Bang Theory. Dude, no, it's so funny because you have the <laughs> oh, phone Jesus. case of oh, Big Bang don't Theory. Even. Don't insult me like that. I'm going to start telling people that that's a Big Bang Theory phone case. I thought wasn't. I thought that was the name of the show that we're doing. <laughs> oh, sorry. This is the Big Bang Theory Appreciation Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the podcast Connor does in his own time. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I, totally. I he I loves Sheldon. Yeah, I've never like Sheldon has. I think I've only ever seen like two or three like full episodes, and like I don't think I've ever not laughed as hard like ever. <laughs> the opposite of like laughing. the app. Like, it's like the opposite of laughter. Like I like like the void of laughter. Yeah, like, like now your laughter went into a void for a while. Like now, if I ever like, I feel like if I ever saw something that was funny, I wouldn't have the ability to. You're laugh. In, you're in laughter debt. That's yeah, what they call it. So exactly. the next time you see something funny, you're like, well, I kind of wasted it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're in debt right now. Well, that was a hot, steamy shit on a bad show. Yeah. Huh. And they're making a million dollars an episode. Oh, God. Plus, back like, that's a hot, steamy shit on us. I want to know who watches that show. Like, in legitimately... Other than you? Thinks it's funny. <laughs> um, people who... Like, it's geared towards, like, fake nerds. You know, like, how girls consider... Like, they see a guy with glasses, and they're like, oh, I love nerds. But it's, like, just, like, a good-looking guy in glasses. And he's not actually, like nerdy or anything like that's what big bang theory fans are so you yeah totally it's just totally. Like, i watched a few minutes of it and it was just so goddamn dry i could feel myself it's dehydrating. not even dry it's just it just wasn't not it's even just funny. Not funny like i could take dry was, humor no yeah. but there, it's like the not good it's, kind of dry it's like unfunny anti-jokes it's like dry like drought like people are fucking have you dying. ever seen uh like it edited without the la- taking the laugh track out yeah it's yeah you yeah i saw you post it's that yeah I get it. unfu- <laughs> yeah. it's like even worse it's like i think it's worse with the laugh track because it's like they're trying to force something out of you i'm like i feel nothing yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh god we should do an episode just completely ripping on it instead of we've done that episodes. like in five episodes yeah i know but i want a whole episode dedicated hey, who's to counting it? brother you can never rip on that show enough. There's 
what, like 11 seasons now or some shit like that, it deserves ripping. Hey, so I actually put together a little uh, list if you guys are interested. A little, yes. little roast list, if you will. All right. Uh, so I'm just getting ready to take a hot steamy dump on both of you guys right now. So a lot of these shows I haven't seen, I'm actually interested in seeing. Uh, but let's just go down the list here. So starting with Freaks and Geeks. Sounds like the room I'm sitting in right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Undeclared, uh, just like Connor's sexual preference. Uh, Agent Quarter. I'm just getting <laughs> shit on today. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, I got like uh, five or six more things on the list. Uh, Aaron Carter, a.k.a. Agent Carter. I already hit that joke earlier, so uh, that's how I beat Shaq. That's Party of Aaron's. Yeah. Better off Ted. Uh, more like better off Connor. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this next one. That was better than I thought. <laughs> this next one will turn into a compliment. Legit, right? That was the name of the show, Legit? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you guys are pretty legit now because how many viewers do you have? Let them know. Oh, we have like close to 1600 downloads now. that is yeah. awesome that's actually i get a i'm gonna put a little uh, round of applause in on that one oh good thanks, for man. you guys thanks, great thanks. guys here i know i'm taking a hot steamy dump on them right now but they're they're good guys and they're doing a good thing well connor's into that sort of stuff yeah who's telling me before uh the only thing but i have you uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're into getting dumped on like you, oh, you're telling me right. that before yeah yeah i think i heard let's have an episode of just up. like rip it on each other let's just yeah, get it all out yeah most episode uh, Batman Beyond. I don't have much to say about that except for Terry McGinnis. That name is making me thirsty. Uh, Guinness. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it. thanks. Yeah, thanks, guys. Pat thanks thanks to the viewers that also were a little slow on that. Pat, Pat was probably more slow than anybody on that. And uh, let's see, uh, Young Justice. Uh, you know, last name first. That's a male porn star. So Connor likes male porn stars. And um, <laughs> do you look like a male porn star? I do. I am tonight. Um, you look like you're gonna star in a porn. <laughs> I'm gonna star, you look like a, your porn name would be Rusty Dingus. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be a porn that nobody ever watches, and it's it, they sell it in like the dollar Just Pat. rack. Yeah, uh, Pat watches. Well, if it, you yeah. take a shit on somebody, Connor will be right there. That's right. Yeah, that's why he'll volunteer actually. And also, uh, but if you zoom in on the girl's feet or the guy's feet, I'm sorry, Pat will fucking jerk off right there. <laughs> uh, and Young Justice also gives me the impression that uh, Connor likes uh, little children. He does. He's the next Jared from Subway. Oh, that's, I, uh, I like feel that's like we shouldn't disturbing. post this episode <laughs> just because of the last five uh, minutes. That was a complete joke, people. Yeah, obviously, obviously you should yeah. understand. I that. have like family that listens to this. Like I'm I didn't kinda, know that, man. Like, no, we're joking. Yeah, I would have kept it PG, dude. Come on, man. You didn't tell me that. Listen, you've said worse stuff on this. We've all said worse True. stuff on this than that. I just like to apologize to Connor's family. Anybody out there is just, just you know, just apologize a terrible to deal with right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my roast, so... Uh... Dude, you practically live here. <laughs> yeah, that's my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're his dad. That's right. I'm also Connor's dad. Um, that was my roast. I, mean, I hope you guys liked it. Yeah, that's all I have. All right. Yeah. Still don't remember that other show? <laughs> no, I really can't remember, right. so it really that's must fine. be not important. That's fine. Uh, well, that's going to wrap it up. Guys, what are some of your, the shows you think were canceled way too soon? I know Reddit constantly jerks off about Firefly. Saying it was canceled way too soon. Never saw an episode. Well, uh, I watched one episode, uh, one or two episodes. It's fine, but like Reddit sucks its dick hard. Well, actually, I got an alibi to throw in there if you guys are open to hearing it. Uh, it's real recent. Um, Uncle Buck, they already canceled it. What's that about? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot they made a series. <laughs> yeah, I'm completely fucking kidding, by the way. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Dude, Uncle Buck the movie, man. I, I, love I that can't movie. get enough of it. Yeah, movies. I just can't get enough. You know what? I like Mike Epps, too, but fuck that no, I, yeah, I No, like, I, mean, I don't have anything against the actors. Yeah. I, I think they had a great cast, but Jesus Christ, what were you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> they could have called, called it something else and it would have been fine. Yeah. Could have called it anything else. Yeah, Uncle Fuck. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What are some shows you think were canceled too soon? Uh, do you hate any of the shows we said? Do you hate Connor like we do? <laughs> I hope not, because he's he's all right. He's, I mean, he's we, he lets guy. us use yeah. this, his basement as a studio. We yeah, love, that's, we, that's about as redeeming. We quality. love to hate him. Is what exactly we're to say. It's true. exactly. Uh, none of the stuff we say on here is actually a personal attack. Well, sometimes I guess. It feels like it, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shows that were can canceled too soon. Let us know in the comments, tweet us, Facebook, all that bullshit. Um, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe on YouTube, download and rate us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean. We just got on this thing called TuneIn. I expect most people won't use it. I only heard of it because I looked up places to put the podcast and they accepted it on there. So it's just out there now. 
Um, remember to like us on Facebook and invite you, invite your friends to like us at facebook.com slash awesome Sunday show. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at awesome sun show. I'm at Rick Pat Mick on Twitter. I'm at lesson Connor. I don't have a Twitter, but if you guys want to get at me on Snapchat, I'm a big Snapchat guy. He it's, is the king <laughs> of Snapchat. That is very true. It's Wilt underscore Daddy. That's W-I-L-T underscore D-A-D-D-Y. Wilt Daddy. I'll see you there. The best person to yeah. follow on Snapchat is <laughs> definitely Ryan Wilt. Thank you, partner. Uh, I also hope that the Awesome Sunday show does not make the list of canceled too soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you very we much. We will end it when, on our terms. Yeah. Like next week, probably. But. Uh, no, but, uh, anyway, guys, remember to do all that stuff. And, uh, if you have any suggestions for topics, we're always open to listening to them. The one we did last week, the fall TV premiere was actually suggested by Anthony Delia. I don't remember if I mentioned that in that, but thank you to him. Uh, but yeah, if you want a topic you want us to talk about, let us know on any of those outlets I said, or you can email us awesome Sunday show at gmail.com or, you know, any comments, concerns, you know, all that bullshit. Uh, all right, guys. Take it easy. Peace. Yeah.